I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt once again. This is a paid request from Mega Pork Chop Express. Thank you so much for that. And <laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to do this review because I don't know what I just saw. I think I had a fever dream for about 90 some minutes, and but it was a movie uh, called Zoo Warriors from the Magic Mountain from 1983, and this was the film that inspired John Carpenter. And Big Trouble in Little China. This is the film. With its wizards and its sorcery and its insanity and its pacing. It was entertaining. It was fun. And for those interested in requesting paid requests, you can send me either directly to my PayPal or draw my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. This film is directed by Choi Hark, who... I know some people call him the Steven Spielberg of Asia, although the George Lucas of Asia would be see, more appropriate in this instance. Choi Hark has done quite a few films. In America, he did the John Claude Van Damme films Double Team and Knock Off, which I know those are considered his low points. I enjoy those two films, as flawed as they are. I still enjoy those films. And yeah, I know they're flawed. They're not my favorite Van Damme films, but that off-kilter energy and then being a big, big Van Damme fan, it was fun to see. Even though apparently Van Damme was so coked out of his mind, he doesn't remember a fucking thing filming knockoff. He doesn't remember a damn thing about actually filming the movie. That's how coked out of his mind he was. He Apparently he himself admitted this, so go figure. But this movie... Yuen Bao, who I've seen him from time to time, he pops up with Jackie Chan, him, Jackie Chan, Samuel Han, they were guys who grew up together in the Peking Opera School, and I think Yuen Bao would be in quite a few of the Jackie Chan films. He stars as a soldier that he gets these conflicting orders from commanders. He says, screw it, I'm getting out of this fight, getting out of this battle. Pretty soon he meets up with Sammo Hun, who is another soldier. He's dressed in red. I believe, yeah, it was in red because they're fighting, and then they decide, well, wait a minute, we don't want to kill each other. I did like the bit where, in the fray of the battle, this bigger battle where there's like people in green and yellow and orange, the two are pretending to fight. The make people believe they're doing something but they don't really want to hurt each other and like that whole bit was pretty entertaining and Samuel Hone is trying to get one side to fight the other and vice versa they keep, keep getting apart those get back together so we can pretend fine because we don't want to hurt each other and then people will leave us alone one thing leads to another Yun Biao 
is on a cliff. He falls. He finds this cave. He goes into it. And then he's in this other world. And that's where the insanity really hits the fan. And you have a swordsman. You have, I believe, like a monk and his apprentice. Samuel Hung comes back later as a different character who has these eyebrows and mustache that's long and twirly and will hold people down and hold things down and move on their own. And they deal with this blood demon. They don't a pure evil that does you know they don't want it. They I get these magic swords. And there's also an ice princess and her cavalcade of women. And like when Yuan Bao gets there, there's these like evil Tuscan Raiders. Like imagine the Tuscan Raiders from stars if they're cloaked in black and more evil. And they've got like jewel light eyes and they're flying around and Yuan Bao's getting the fuck out of the way. And the swordsman saves him and he's throwing these blades and at times he throws the blades there's light coming out of it. And it's hitting people in the forehead. And there's a cave of skulls. And the monk and his apprentice. There's these things that they th throw around to fight these animated like crows. These animated birds. And then this evil cult comes by. And there, there's all these projectiles being shot. And some get hit and fly back. And Expl not bloody explosion. But like they get hit. As like someone put a firecracker in their shirt. There's a point like there's like a, a ghost. A imagine like a red cloak with no body in it. But it has like a face and a mouth. And some guy's like throwing this stuff. And the cloak's going all around. And then like it. This was Choi Hark and the group trying to make a big special effect movie. Like they did in the United States. For the Chinese audience. They might have gotten some guys who worked on effects in the US. And while the effects may look dated. There is a charm to them. And there's actually a lot of ambition. A lot of inventiveness. And like I said. It's non-stop pacing to the point of exhaustion. Which is a good thing because it's never boring and it's worth a watch just to see how the insanity applies. These optical effects, I get people flying around in crazy speeds, people get frozen alive. Later on there's a guy chained to a boulder and he's flying around, he's got these chains going around. Someone is contained this evil with his eyebrows and mustache. It, it's fun and entertaining just to watch and go, what the hell is going to happen next? What the fuck is going to happen next? Where is this going? Uh, there's a part where Yung Bao gets healed. And the guy keeps hitting him. And like his biceps were balloon up and down and... His chest balloons up and back, and then his, I think his back, it was him doing with his, his shoulders. That make, kind of like what Bruce Lee would do, a little like his shoulders ready pop out, but they're just able, uh, when they're trained, they being martial artist. A martial artist is trained to be agile and to really maneuver their body in any way, shape, or form. They're able to do that. You know, kudos to the martial artist. And Yuan Bao was able to, and it just, but there's also some practical effects bubbling back and forth. I say there's a woman comes in that freezes people, and then they get unfrozen, and then the swordsman, he's like possessed, or there's an evil form of himself, and at times he turns gray, and at times it looks like there's firecrackers inside him, and There's a time where the swordsman and this woman are riding around on stone elephants and uh, I, 
to try to explain the plot, I don't know if I can do it. Just, it got to a point, I was confused, I did not know what the fuck was going on. And I kind of just let it fly over, the, okay, I don't know what's going on, but alright, it's... Hey, we need to work together, oh now this person has got evil inside them, maybe they try to exercise the, the swordsman, it doesn't work out. Then everybody gets frozen. I guess they get killed. Except the three that remain. You and Biao. The, the one guy's apprentice and this other girl. I guess everybody else who got frozen died. Just most of them you never see again. Like the swordsman you never see again. So that confused me. Maybe they said in dialogue I missed it. Because it, it goes like this and I'm like... I love fast pace as much as anybody, but I do think bits of the story and the cohesion, it's sacrificed to have this insane, ambitious filmmaking, and a part of me commends that, really does commend that. But I do think, I feel like Big Troll Low China took that and did it much better because I think Big Troll Low China. That's still a fast-paced movie, but it did calm things down. It does have a plot that makes more sense compared to this, and it does better with its characters. I actually get to know and like Jack Burton and Wayne, you know, Dennis Dunn's character, and A. Shin. Um, I mean, it's not deep into his character, but you understand more than... Like, you don't really get much of an understanding of the characters other than maybe they want to stop the evil and, you know, war bad like try the the basics you and Biao they try to do the zero to hero status but I do think Big Trouble China like John Carpenter was able to have with the writer W.D. Richter who had done Buckaroo Banzai and I'm going to compare the two because John Carpenter based his film on this not plot wise but some of the the crazy sorcery and at the end when people are flying around and like when Aid Shen, Lo Pan doing the magic thing, that's kind of what they're a lot of this. Like I said, I, for, if no one's ever seen this and you're into old school, it's wire work, but this is a wire work I had to deal with because of the insanity, the imagination, and just wondering what the hell is going to happen next. That is. At the very least appealing. But like I said. When it got to the end. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I'm just witnessing the insanity. And yes. The effects. Especially, especially the optical. They are dated. But I mean. It's 1983. It's not 1993. It wasn't 2003. It was 1983. It was of its time. And. It, there's Like I said. There's still a charm to it. At least for me. But spoiler alert for the ending, because I gotta go into this, as to, what do you mean by confusing, Matt? Let's see, the three is steep. I'm, again, maybe they send dialogue, by Mystic because it's going so fast. But, I, I guess, like, the swordsman is dead? Because the one girl was taking the swordsman to this thing and pushed her away. And then, it cut to... Outside of this portal and blocks of ice are shooting out. I'm like, did the one monk who the guy was the apprentice to, did he die? Was he frozen? Did the one, one other, sword, did, did the swordsman himself die? Did the apprentice for the, the monk who, there's the monk, there's his apprentice. The apprentice is with you and Bao. Did the monk one guy, like, all these other women, did they die? Were they, I guess, frozen to death? Because... Ten minutes before, we saw people frozen, completely frozen, and they were able to get back. Maybe it was a time limit, I don't know, but they were able to get them frozen, be fine. I don't know, maybe some other stuff, and so there's the three of them left, and then they find this guy with the, the boulder and the chains, and... And then the part of me is like, well, what the fuck happened to that guy eventually? Did he just die eventually? Is he still with the... So you... 
I don't even know how to explain this. Then this t this lady grabs these the two heroes and they change clothes and there's opti optical effects of them flying around as if they're Superman and then they're in the sky with wannabe lightsabers and they're fighting the bad guy who's now all in red and I'm like what the fuck is happening and then like the guy's propelling them back and then I think maybe the ice princess from before like she gets unfrozen but I'm like what what about everybody else is everybody else still frozen do they get unfrozen too or is this someone else I think it was the Ice Princess, but like, what happened to the other people? Are they still frozen? Are they just dead? Are they too far gone? And then she flies off, and then she drives through the the dying red cloak, and then they disappear. And then uh, the the demon is coming out because Semohan can't hold it in anymore. And then the two clap hands like Arnold, you know, and Carl Weathers and Predator, and then they form a, a fucking light shell, go down into the demon, and then it explodes, and then. It's them and the, the girl who was left behind, because as I said, there was three that escaped. And then there's Samuel Hun, and they're laughing. And then there's the battle with the Samuel from the beginning in red. And then he starts talking, and then he just flies off. And then boom, it cuts. I thought that was really abrupt for an ending. Really abrupt for an ending. I'm like, wait, that's it? Like, what the fuck? So I, I guess the swordsman's dead, I guess the monk is dead, I guess those women are dead, I guess. And the, the, why was the ending seem abrupt? I'm like, did I miss something? Did they cut something out for the ending? Why did it re, re, Samurai Hun is voicing what the... What the fuck happened? And You know, as a guy that would like more of a fight... More of an impact on the death of the character. Like, again, I think Big Trollo China did it better. Where Jack Burton finally gets the one thing. Where he does it. <laughs> right into Lil Pan's forehead. Or Dennis Dunn fighting the guy. And then, you know, stabbing him. Throwing the sword. Even the one guy. Harry Terry. Uh, he's not going to stop. <laughs> the ending just seemed abrupt. And, in this one. And. So, again, while I enjoyed watching the film for an insanity, I recommend the film if you can find it for the insanity, what it was trying to do creativity-wise with the crazy off-the-wall flying around. and I could see the Big Troll Low China influence. Like, there are, even in the background, there's these statues that remind me of Lil Pan's lair in Big Troll Low China. They had these weird statues in the background. I do recommend watching the film for its insanity its creativity its craziness it's just i don't ever see myself watching it again because i can't say i really got into the characters they were fine like I, you want good to triumph over evil but you know the idea this is where i think someone like john carpenter with wd richter did better in virtual of china where you got a lot more fun like personality of the characters i, I thought that was done better. This, I think, character work as story cohesion was sacrificed for the insanity. And while that makes it a fun watch, that doesn't make it a movie that I will watch multiple times in the future. I don't know if that made sense. But I watched the trailer, watch clips. You'll see one talking about the insanity. And it, it especially with the ending is just going rapid fire like wait a minute there's a girl in the sky and then they grabbed him and then they have a change of clothes now they're in black and now they're uh now they have these wannabe lightsabers now they're facing the guy now this one girl goes and grabs the guy then they don't they turn to a whirlpool of, of light and then they it make the thing explode and i'm like what the fuck's going on what the fuck's happening i'm like hold it Holy, what the fuck going on? No, fuck that. We're going to go. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, so you might not understand what's going on. If you just, you know, you can enjoy the visuals, enjoy the insanity, enjoy the creativity, the ambition, the you know, fun, charming, old school effects. Some pretty solid work. Uh, not too bad choreography either. I mean, I'm always going to be the guy that's more of the Bruce Lee, John Dwight Van Damme, you know, more old school type of fight scenes. But, you know, this was, 
I would rather watch this any day over Crouchy Tiger Hidden Dragon. Like this is more compared compared to the two, this is more interesting, more crazy, more imaginative, and more fun. <laughs> more fun to talk about. And more fun to watch. I'll give it that. So I did like the movie. It's just not a film I'm going to seek out to get into my collection. But it is a fun watch and it's worth it if you're at all a fan of these type of films. If you want to see the inspiration for Big Troll Low China, alone, it makes it worth a watch. And like I said, you uh, there's a lot of fucking craziness to it. And uh, when it starts, it does not stop. It's almost non-stop. Like I said, almost to the point of exhaustion. So, take that for what you will. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.